Hey guys, this is Miss Giblin, and I'm here today to talk to you about my favorite property of multiplication, the distributive property. So the distributive property is how we break apart a multiplication statement into easier parts. If we look at the word distributive, you might realize that it looks similar to the word distribute. Distribute means to give out. So think of a paper boy giving out papers to each of the houses on its roof. In the distributive property of multiplication, we're going to break apart one of the factors, the factor we don't know so well, into two add-ins, and we're going to distribute the other factor to these two add-ins. So if we look at the multiplication statement 3 times 5, we can break apart the 5 into 2 plus 3. Those are your add-ins. We can then distribute or give out the 3 to each of these add-ins. So we can do 3 times 2 plus 3 times 3. In both cases, our product would be 15. Why do we do this? We do this so that we can break apart maybe an expression that we don't know so well into easier parts that are more manageable that maybe we can even do in our head. It makes it easier to solve. So let's look at an example. 6 times 8. This expression is one that you already know, and you may realize I have drawn a rectangle here. Why? Because we already know the area formula, and the area formula of rectangles lends itself to the distributive property, because it says that we can take the area of a rectangle and we can break this rectangle into smaller parts to help us solve something, which is exactly what the distributive property is. So let's pretend that you didn't already know that the area of this rectangle was 48. Wink, wink. We can break apart an atom maybe that we don't know so well, like the 8, into two smaller parts, two things we can add together. So I know that 6 plus 2 equals 8. So I'm going to break this 8 and I'm going to change it into 6 plus 2. So now I know that in order to find the area of the larger rectangle, I can actually add the area of these two smaller rectangles together. So I broke apart this one factor into two add-ins, and I'm going to multiply them all, each individually to get the area of the larger rectangle. So I'm going to say that instead of doing 6 times 8, I'm going to do 6 times 6 plus 6 times 2. So I know that 6 times 6 is 36, and I know that 6 times 2 is 12. So I know that if I add 36 plus 12, I would get 48, which is my same product. So I broke apart this factor that I don't know so well into two add-ins, 6 plus 2. And then I distributed the 6 to each of them. Finally, I added them together. So let's take a look at what this looks like algebraically or in equation form instead of pictorial form. So again, we have this larger rectangle, 6 times 8, with the factor that I don't know so well. I knew that the area formula told me that 6 times 8 equals 48, or 6 times 8 equals the area of this rectangle, 48. But instead, I'm going to break this rectangle into two smaller rectangles with factors or add-ins that I already know, 6 plus 2. So I replace the 8 with the two add-ins, 6 plus 2. So you can see I broke apart the 8 into 6 plus 2. Then I'm going to distribute the 6 to each of the add-ins. So I'm going to write 6 times 6, 6 times 6, and I'm going to write 6 times 2. I'm going to add them together because I'm adding the two rectangles together. Finally, I solve each of these individually. So I know that 6 times 6 is 36, and I know that 6 times 2 is 12. I add them together to get my total sum of 48, which is the same as the one over here. So you may be thinking right now, why would I do all that work on a fact that I know already in my head? Well, guess what? You don't just need this for easy problems. You can do it for hard problems too. So let's take a look at a little bit harder problem. 
So if we look at the problem 9 times 47, you might be saying, what? I can't do this in my head. But yes, you can. Just use the distributive property. Oftentimes, I like to look at the larger factor and break it into expanded form. So if I look at 47, I know that there are four tens, or it's 40, and seven ones. So I can say it's 40 plus 7. So I'm breaking apart this factor into the add-ins 40 plus 7. Step two is to distribute the other factor to each of these add-ins. So I'm going to replace this statement with the expression 9 times 40 plus 9 times 7. So I distribute this 9 to each of the add-ins. Then I'm going to solve each of these individually. So I already know that 9 times 4 is 36, and we recently learned the rule of 10. So knowing 9 times 4 is 36, I also know that 9 times 40 is 360. And then I know that 9 times 7 is 63. So now I have 360 plus 63. I took the products of each of these statements or expressions individually, and I'm going to add them together. 360 plus 63 is 423. So you can see I took a harder statement and I broke it down into easier parts. The distributed property can even help us solve larger problems. So if you look at 8 times 765, you may think you would never be able to do this, but you can. So I'm going to break apart this 765 into add-ins. Sometimes I like to do expanded form. So my expanded form would be 700 plus 60 plus 5. Then I'm going to distribute this 8, my other factor, to each of these add-ins. So I'm going to have 8 times 700, 8 times 60, and 8 times 5. I'm going to solve each of these individually. I know that 8 times 700 is 5600. I know that 8 times 60 is 480, and I know that 8 times 5 is 40. I'm going to add these all together, and sometimes even I can't do these in my head, so I'm going to do it on this side. I see that when I add it together, my sum is 6,120. So now I took a complex expression, like 8 times 765, and I made it much easier to solve my product being 6,120. So to review, the distributive property helps us break down a harder multiplication problem into easier, more manageable parts. And we have three basic steps. First, we break down the harder factor into add-ins. You then distribute or multiply each add-in by your other factor. You solve each partial product individually, and then you add them together. Good luck and let me know if you have any questions.